Welcome back to Face the State on this Easter Sunday. Turning now to the race for governor. And joining us today is a Republican candidate, Mark Loretti. He is 63 years old. He is the mayor of Shelton since 1991. And he ran for governor in 2014. And Mayor Loretti is with us here today. And good to see you back here on the program. It's my pleasure. I always enjoy it. As you know, we were just discussing Andrew McDonald and the big debate of the state Senate over that. Did the vote go the way you believe it should have? Uh, I probably would have voted that way as well. Uh, I, I'm not for people who uh, don't interpret the law, but, you know, inflict their ideology into things. I think that that's very wrong. You know, if you don't like the laws, let's change the laws. As you know, Democrats are going to use these homophobia allegations against Republicans in the fall. Do you fear it will be used against your party? And what's the defense? Well, I don't think there is any defense for it. People say a lot of things that are not true. And um, look at, at the end of the day, the ideologies will carry out. Look at Andrew McDonald got... Uh, nominated and uh, voted in and it, it crossed party lines so you know how does that water how does that carry any water last month we had tim herps one of your challengers one of your fellow republican candidates on this program he predicted a three-way primary coming out of the convention with him mayor mark bowton and another person do you believe you'll be that person and do you agree with his assessment that there'll be three no i don't agree with his assessment i i think there'll probably be more than three people that will come out of the convention it, it's my guess that uh, many delegates are in a lot of different camps at this point, you know, with all the, all the different candidates. And uh, I think that's what the result is going to show at the convention. What do you believe your support looks like at the convention? Do you have I, enough delegates to get on the I, ballot? I wholeheartedly believe that after all this time in office and with my record, particularly on taxes, that, that people, that that's a message that not only Connecticut needs, but resonates with people. So you don't it, think anyone's going to win the convention? Uh, I would be surprised at this point. Someone's going to come out with a majority, and that'll, well, not say a majority, but more than another person. I think that there will be people who have more than others, clearly, but I'm not sure that we'll get someone with 51 percent. Mayor Bowton's health was an issue this past week. He had a big news conference to say he's okay. He wasn't taking the right medications and things like that. Do you believe his, his health will be a campaign issue at all? Look, that's for Mayor Bowton to decide. Um, I, for one, don't focus on anyone else. I worry about Do you believe myself. he's healthy enough to be governor? Uh, I don't know that. I couldn't say with uh, with a clear a clear conscience that that was you know yes or no. Um, you know those are those are personal things with people, and um, if he chooses to keep it that way, then, then so be it. He'll have to make his case to the public. As you know, the state is beginning a bailout for the city of Hartford, and you've been against that because you're saying Shelton, we have balanced budgets, we haven't raised taxes. What do you think about this bailout, and is the state making a mistake by doing it? Well, I think it's it's a double standard, you know, and I do have 26 balanced budgets. I have a mill rate that people would, would die for, and look at I haven't raised taxes in 10 years. A lot of people would say it's apples and oranges. Hartford's a much bigger city. They have all this untaxable property, much of it government-owned and nonprofit. And, and they receive a lion's share of the state funding through the state budget, through education, ECSC, and, and other things. You know, a lot of the economic development projects that occur in Hartford are funded by the taxpayer and, and okay I, I mean look we have to recognize that there are some shortcomings but at the end of the day the bailout doesn't solve anything structurally and if you were going to solve it from a structural standpoint and then you know put money into the equation to, to get them over the hump you know okay I, I, I can live with that but we need to solve the problems and we didn't do that do you think Hartford's a poorly run city I think it has been poorly run for a number of years now uh, in, uh, in the past and now, yes. Would you think bankruptcy would be a better option for the capital city? It, it gives Hartford the opportunity to fix the deficiencies that exist, the unsustainability of their pensions, of their, their employment benefits, you name it. It's, look, at it, a lot of it's got to do with the management style or lack of it. Uh, how did I hang around for so many years if I didn't have a management style that, that led and that created uh, an economic environment that was conducive for people to live and to work and for businesses to come and to grow. That's what Hartford needs to do. That's what, what Waterbury and Bridgeport need to do. Wouldn't bankruptcy, though, give the whole state a black eye? The capital city going bankrupt would make news all across the country. Well, well look, if you want to get hung up on then, then I guess okay. But don't we have a black eye now? Connecticut was the cream of the crop in this state. We had more Fortune 500 companies in our state at one time than anyone else in the, in the union. And all that's changed. 
You became mayor in 1991. That was the year that the year after the income, well, the year of the income tax was 1991. Do you believe that was a mistake to implement an income tax in the state? And if you're elected, will you make any effort to try to reduce or get rid of it, like Mayor Bowden has suggested? Well, sometimes you have to do things to accommodate and compensate for the lack of, of something that's not happening. In that case, it was a structural hole in the budget that was pretty significant. So the income tax, the implementation of it did its job. But the legislature, over the course of the last 25 years, has gone above and beyond uh, what the income tax was really designed to do. But let's not lose sight of the fact that when it was first put in place, it was 3.5%. Uh, it's, it's almost 7 today. Uh, so the, the kind of money that it's generated has done its job, but the spending has outpaced it. We often hear about your record in Shelton, but we never hear about what, is going, what you're going to do if elected governor to improve the state. What would it be? First 100 days, what kind of changes will you make? Well, I think that I will appoint people in positions of leadership in, in the respective departments throughout the state that uh, understand how to, how to affect a change that are goal-oriented, that are accomplished in their, in their own right, and not people just that are, are political appointments. I think that's so significant. I think it's also important to understand that we need to change the mindset of state govern, government and how uh, state services are delivered or not delivered. So, I mean, there are many things that have to happen. I also, I don't think it's fair to say that I don't uh, tell people how it would tr I would transcend my success in Shelton to the state because I don't think people understand how the state got into this position. You know, under my tenure, I served under four different governors. They all regulated too much, they all spent too much, and they all taxed too much. All got the same result. I got a different result. It's really about a management style and leadership. In terms of revenue, what kind of ideas do you have to bring in new revenue to the state? Some are suggesting casinos, tolls. Well, look, at what I did in Shelton and I think should happen here in the state of Connecticut is we've got to bring more taxpayers into the equation. We're losing taxpayers. We're losing residents. We're losing residents with wealth because of the estate tax. I would seek to eliminate that because it's unproductive. We need to keep our wealth here in Connecticut. So it's things like that that are so significant. And, and, and beyond that, you know, yes, the, the income tax, uh, you can reduce it or stabilize it. I think that it is unfair or facetious to think that you can eliminate it, especially when you say you're going to do it over a 10-year period, because you can't guarantee that you're going to be able to be here for 10 years to see it through. But it's a suggestion by, as you know, one of your other fellow candidates, Mark Bowton. He's the only one who's saying it, though. Well, is, no, is, there are a few others that are saying it Is it not it as feasible? Well. It's, it's not practical at this point, because we've built in a level of, of spending to the tune of $9 billion that has to be dealt with. So first things first. Not only that, but you have to have the uh, support of the state legislature to do a lot of these things. You know, I keep going back to the fact that I have served as mayor under four different governors and watched them crank this up. You know, the legislature was, had a, a big hand in that. The legislature has to have even a bigger hand in, in solving it. So the next governor really needs to have a better working relationship with the state legislature. Mark Loretti, candidate for governor. I'm sure we'll see you at the convention. Thanks you will. On. Thank you. When we come back, our flashback will take you back to 1974. And I welcome your comments. You can tweet me, find me on Facebook or on Instagram right now.